Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 24. Paul on trial before Felix. After five days, the high priest Ananias came down with certain elders and an orator, one Tertullus. They informed the governor against Paul. When he was called, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by you we enjoy much peace, and that prosperity is coming to this nation by your foresight, we accept it in all ways and in all places, most excellent Felix, with all thankfulness. But that I don't delay you, I entreat you to bear with us and hear a few words. For we have found this man to be a plague an instigator of insurrections among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we arrested him. The Textus Receptus adds, We wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commanding officer Lysias came by and with great violence took him out of our hands. The Textus Receptus adds, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the attack, affirming that these things were so. When the governor had beckoned him to speak, Paul answered, Because I know that you have been a judge of this nation for many years, I cheerfully make my defense, seeing that you can verify that it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship at Jerusalem. In the temple they didn't find me disputing with anyone or stirring up a crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city. Nor can they prove to you the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that after the way, which they call a sect, so I serve the God of our fathers. Very significant here. He said, by the way, okay? He serves the God of our fathers. Consider this. Paul is a Jew, 100%. And he is talking from a Jewish point of view. He said, by the way, okay? Most Christians today would say they that is Christian, okay? That's the way is another name for the first New Testament Christian church, okay? So Paul said it's by the way he serves the God of the fathers, okay? Speaking as a Jew, speaking about Jewish fathers, Paul drew a clear link, a clear connection between the way and traditional Judaism. It's by the way I serve the God of our fathers, believing all things that are according to the law. Paul never said, oh, you know what? We don't go by the law no more. We don't go by the Torah no more. No, he said, believing all things. What does that mean? When the Torah says, do this, if Paul says, yeah, I believe that, guess what? He does it. If the Torah says, don't do this, and Paul says, I believe that, guess what? Paul doesn't do that. When Paul said he believes all things according to the Torah, he was saying, obviously, he was saying that he obeys the law. He believes the law. He believes all things according to the law and which are written in the prophets. Once again, Paul did not speak like a lot of Christians do today. He didn't say, oh, that's Old Testament. We don't, we don't go by the Old Testament no more. You know, we, I, that's just, that's old, okay? That's passed away. No, he said, I believe, not I used to. I do believe all things according to the Torah. I do it. I obey it. I observe it. He proved that in Acts chapter 21. And that which is written in the prophets. Having hope toward God, which these also themselves look for, that there will be resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. 
In this, I also practice always having a conscience void of offense toward God and men. Now, after some years, I came to bring gifts for the needy for my nation and offerings, amid which certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, not with a mob, nor with turmoil. They ought to have been here before you and to make accusation, if they had anything against me. Or else let these men themselves say what injustice they found in me when I stood before the council. Listen, those of you who go by Paul's letters, those of you who like to quote Paul's letters to justify your secret sin by saying that it's not by works but all by faith. Listen, if you lived like Paul, if you stood before Jewish rulers and challenged them to find something in you that is against Torah, would they be able to find it? They had a hard time with Paul. They couldn't prove that he was breaking Torah in any way because Paul did not break Torah. As he said in Philippians chapter 3, he lives blamelessly according to the law. In other words, he doesn't break Torah anywhere. There are no commandments left undone with Paul. Can you say that? Or else let these men themselves say what injustice they found in me when I stood before the council. Unless it is for this one thing that I cried standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged before you today. Paul made it perfectly clear. He proved with all of his might in Acts chapter 21 that he was Torah observant and that he walked according to the law in all things and that he taught others to do so likewise. So they couldn't get him on that. So they tried to get him on these other little things like resurrection of the dead, okay? So he didn't disobey any of the commands. He didn't break any of the Torah, but he teaches the resurrection of the dead. That's it. We're gonna, we're gonna get him for teaching the resurrection of the dead now because we know we can't get him for breaking Torah because he never did. But Felix, having more exact knowledge concerning the way, deferred them, saying, When Lysias, the commanding officer, comes down, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion that Paul should be kept in custody and should have some privileges, and not to forbid any of his friends to serve him or to visit him. But after some days, Felix came with Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewess, and sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Messiah Yeshua, Christ Jesus. As he reasoned about righteousness, when do you hear righteousness preached anymore in church? Okay, I mean, I mean they, they quote from the apostle of grace Paul's letters, but they conveniently ignore righteousness. As Paul reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. Doesn't that sound very familiar? Jesus himself said, when the Spirit of God comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict you about righteousness, about the judgment of God, and about the things to come. So as Paul reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was terrified. When you are right with God and when you are preaching the gospel of righteousness, when you are right with God and you are preaching the truth of repentance, when you are right with God and you are preaching against sin and you are preaching pro-righteousness as per Torah and you're preaching about judgment to come, even the rulers of this world will tremble. Felix was terrified and answered, Go your way for this time, and when it is convenient for me, I will summon you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given to him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore also he sent for him more often and talked with him. But when two years were fulfilled, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, and desiring to gain favor with the Jews, Felix left Paul in bonds. Paul certainly went through a lot of hardship and next session we're going to be talking about how Paul was put on trial before Festus.
And as always, it should be a lifestyle. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.